So why automate masonry wall construction? Simply put, to reduce the cost and increase the quality of what is already one of the best construction methods available. Granted, masonry wall construction is but one part of the overall construction process, but it is a major component. Masonry wall construction can account for up to 80% of a building's total material by volume, and as we'll cover in more detail on a later section, replacing CMU construction with 3D printed construction can reduce the masonry construction cost by 46 to 60 percent. Additionally, mimicking the design of a CMU helps to achieve structural integrity and seismic resilience comparable to the well-documented and accepted method of reinforcing CMU construction. By comparing 3D walls to masonry block walls, we can ensure our 3D printed walls meet existing building standards by mimicking the characteristics of the CMU wall. Here, we have a 3D printed wall section that we'll use to demonstrate how wall reinforcement and finishing will be incorporated after the 3D printing process is complete. This particular wall segment was printed using an infill pattern that is directly comparable to the concrete masonry unit. Here, you can see the exterior envelope of the building on this side and the interior wall on this side. When we view the 3D printed segment from the top, you can see that we have printed perpendicular braces to connect the interior and exterior envelopes. We call these perpendicular braces the infill. When we set a standard CMU block on top of our sample wall, you can see that the 3D printed infill pattern is very similar. However, there is one key difference that enables our 3D printed wall sections to be much stronger than traditional CMU blocks. The material thickness of a standard CMU block is one and a half inches. To adhere to this standard material thickness, Oppie's Core's 3D printer also extrudes material measuring an inch and a half in width. But when we view this cutaway section from the side, you can see that the infill material and the envelope material bind together. This creates a 3 inch material thickness which alternates from exterior envelope to interior envelope and back again in accordance with the infill pattern. This additional material thickness provides additional structural integrity beyond what can be provided by traditional CMU block. Remember how much stronger? Tests conducted by Briggs Engineering and Testing and the University of Connecticut found that our 3D printed wall sections have a net area compressive strength of 2,640 PSI. This is roughly 33% stronger than CMU blocks, which are only rated at 2,000 PSI. However, this wasn't the only finding made throughout this rigorous testing. Oppie's Core's 3D printed wall sections also have an equivalent thickness of 4.5 inches and complies with Chapter 7 of the International Building Code for a 2.25 hour fire rating. Additionally, our column sizes comply with the IBC requirements per Section 722.2.4 and we comply with the IBC's minimum cover to reinforcement standards, which allow for the placement of rebar reinforcement per the same section. Additionally, our 3D printed wall sections allow for the placement of up to number 11 rebar and comply with the National Concrete Masonry Association, or NMCA, standards for single wide walls. Furthermore, our 3D printed wall sections comply with the NCMA standards for corrosion resistance and joint reinforcement. If you're interested in learning more about the specific ASTM standards that were used to conduct these tests, or if you'd just like to see the full test reports which are signed and on Briggs letterhead, you can find them published on the National Fire Protection Association's website or at the link below. One thing that you will notice is that unlike other printers, Oppie's Core uses a special spatula to smooth the exterior wall surfaces. This helps to increase the surface area binding the layers together, decrease the 3D material consumption, and significantly reduce the layer sausaging effect produced by other printers. Hint, hint, you may be asked about the three benefits a smoothing spatula provides on the exam. We'll talk more about the extruder and the smoothing spatula later on in the course.
Mimicking the CMU infill pattern also helps to simplify coordination with other trades on the job site. For example, there are already well-established standards for concrete slabs and footers used to support CMU wall structures. In most places, a reinforced concrete spread footing is used to support load-bearing masonry walls. The depth, width, and reinforcement used in these spread footings may vary depending on your local building codes. Also, the soil bearing capacity on your particular site. Nonetheless, we recommend that your engineer adheres to your local building codes for CMU construction when designing concrete footers or load bearing 3D printed walls. Now, let's briefly touch on horizontal and vertical reinforcement. Just like with CMU walls, you may be required to add an additional metal lath, a mesh, or even wire screen as well as additional rebar and grout reinforcement. Before the walls are printed, your contractor should have cast vertical rebar dowels into the slab or added vertical dowels after the slab was poured using a high strength anchoring epoxy in accordance with your local building codes. These vertical rebar dowels protrude up through the slab and are used to firmly secure the building to the slab and can be seen here. After your walls are printed, you will need to cast additional vertical wall reinforcement, just like with CMU construction. This piece of number four vertical rebar represents the vertical wall reinforcement which would continue up to the top of the wall section. Once the rebar is set in place, you will fill the wall cavity with grout to cast the vertical rebar reinforcement in place, as seen here. In most structures, vertical reinforcement will not be required in every single cavity, but check with your local CMU building codes to confirm. We'll discuss horizontal and vertical wall reinforcement, control joints, insulation, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems, lintels and bomb beams, and roof and slab systems in greater detail later on in the course. Thank you.